This episode of FineScale Modeler's new product rundown features HK Models Big B17, Italeri's Lintz, Mang's Push Together Lexington, Edward's Royal Class Spitfire, and a T14 Armada from Panda. Welcome to FineScale Modeler's new product rundown. Only 99 more of these to go before we get to our special 200th episode. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I really am Elizabeth Nash. We've got a truckload of stuff here to help you lighten your wallet. Starting with HK Model's big, beautiful B-17. This iconic bomber is represented here in 132nd scale. Which makes for a seriously large model. Finished, the wingspan on this sucker is going to be 39 inches. So clear some space on your shelves after you clear the workbench to work on it. This thing looks great in the box. Fine recessed panel lines and rivets mark the surface of the airframe parts. The fuselage is broken into the main center section from the cockpit to the rudder hinge on the vertical stabilizer, tail section with the gun position, and the upper fuselage from the windshield to the radio compartment. The last eliminates awkward seams, and all sections are separated on natural panel lines. Optional noses allow for three different versions, including an E-model and two variants of the F with different windows and armament. The navigators and bombardiers positions are comprehensive. There's a map table and lamp, chairs, a Norden bomb site, and more equipment. The cockpit has floor and walls with throttle quadrant, bulkheads, seats, controls, and instrument panels. Aft of the flight deck is a full bomb bay with bulkheads in the center catwalk, walls, 10 bombs, posable doors, and racks. The radio operator's cabin attaches behind the bomb bay with communications equipment. The waist positions can be built with the windows closed and the guns stowed, or windows open and the guns ready for use. The tail includes frames with access for the gunner, the floor, and 50 caliber machine guns. The horizontal stabilizers are braced with posts attached to the frames. The elevators, rudder, ailerons, and flaps are separate and posable. Optional dorsal turrets are provided, and there's detail in the ball turret. There's structural detail inside the wheel wells, including bulkheads, fluid tanks, and landing gear legs, both extended and retracted. Outside the nacelles are the turbochargers. The tires are weighted. The four right R1820 Cyclone engines comprise banks of cylinders and valve rods with separate rocker panel covers. Optional cowl flaps, nacelle rings, and propeller blades cover differences between the E and F variants. Photowatch belts dress the pilot seats. PE also provides intake screens. Resin ammunition chutes supply the guns. To help solve the inevitable quandary of where to display the beast, HK thoughtfully supplies a bracket for the bomb bay to hang the model on the wall. Decals provide markings for three flying fortresses. Chief Seattle, an E in Australian, spring 1942. Knockout Dropper, an F with the 359th Bombing Squadron in England in 1943. And possibly the most famous B-17 of all, Memphis Bell in May 1943. There's a lot to HK Models Flying Fortress. <laughs> and a lot to like. Next from Italeri, a 135th scale LMV Lintz. This Italian armored vehicle is designed for enhanced protection against small arms fire and explosives with a V-shaped hull and armored floor. It can carry five people and has space for a gunner on a platform between the rear seats. Several countries use the vehicle, including Belgium and Italy, who sent it to Lebanon in 2012 and 2013 with Unifil peacekeeping operations. Italeri's kit includes a detailed ladder frame, to which is added a drive shaft, transmission, the lower section of the engine, axles, and exhaust. That's all covered with the protective plate before installation of the suspension arms, springs, and wheels. Soft vinyl tires finish the running gear. Inside the cab, there's a dashboard with molded dials and controls. Decals provide faces. Four complete seats occupy the interior, along with an equipment rack, gunner's platform, and roll cage. The truck's body features crisp recessed panel lines, latches, and non-skid patches on the roof. The cover for the bed is separate. The doors are separate, but it's unclear if any can be posed open except for the cargo hatch at the back. Interior panels detail the doors. The gun turret can turn and the hatch is posable. The gun includes an ammunition box. Clear plastic provides the ballistic glass for the windshield and side windows, as well as headlight lenses and mirror glass. Photoetch metal supplies harnesses for the seats, a heat shield for the exhaust, radiator grills, mud flaps, the sling for the spare tire, racks for the wheel chocks and jerry cans, and parts for the gun mount. Nylon mesh needs to be cut for headlight guards and stowage nets in the doors. Decals provide markings for two Belgian lenses in United Nations white in Lebanon and three Italian vehicles, one in UN service and the others in NATO three-color camo. This might be a new vehicle for many, it was for me, but it looks like a fun build with lots of detail. 
A few episodes ago, we showed you Academy's 1700th scale USS Missouri, which was designed to be pushed together. It was a nice introduction to modeling with decent detail and finesse. Meng follows suit with the 1700th scale USS Lexington, designed along similar lines. The ship can be built either waterline or full hull. The major components are the lower hull, including the rudder, waterline plate, upper hull, and flight deck. Under the hull are the prop shafts and props. Anti-aircraft gun tubs and boat decks adorn the hull. Lady Lex's characteristic funnel has more gun decks and a separate cap with radar. The major parts of the island are slide molded, with parts for the decks and masts. The armament includes the 8-inch turrets fore and aft of the island and funnel and a bunch of anti-aircraft guns. Vinyl polycaps allow the main turrets to rotate. The early war air wing includes six F-4F Wildcats, six SBD Dauntless dive bombers, and six TBD Devastators. For beginning modelers, the kit features stickers for the aircraft markings and a nameplate for the stand. Experienced modelers may be disappointed by the lack of water slide decals. Meng's Lexington isn't for everyone, but it's a great kit for getting started building ships. Yeah, nice detail in engineering. Here's Edward's delightful Royal Class Boxing for the 172nd scale Spitfire Mark IX. The basic kit is first rate with terrific options, good detail, and trouble free assembly. Writing in the 2017 February issue of FSM, Walt Fink declared that it was the first kit he'd reviewed that he'd been unable to find a Condor report. The Royal Class kit includes four complete Spitfires. There is an early Mark 9C, a late with C type wing, and two Mark 9Es. Ailerons are separate and surface detail throughout has extremely fine recessed panel lines and rivets. Landing gear, cowl panels, exhausts, and doors combine with a terrific cockpit to supply detail inside and out. There are options to hang things under the wings and a nice four-blade propeller. Optional open and closed canopies are provided along with lights on the clear sprue. Masks will make painting them a snap. And colored photo edge gives instrument panels, seat belts, and more. Also extra here, four sets of resin wheels. Two five-spoke and two four-spoke, tail wheels, and a pair of resin beer kegs that were reportedly carried on two of the marking options. Markings are a highlight of Royal Class kits, and this one is no exception, with 14 options provided on the decal sheet. Most are Royal Air Force fighters, including several flown by foreign pilots, but there are also American, French, Soviet, and Israeli aircraft. It wouldn't be Royal Class without a glass, in this case a nice beer glass emblazoned with a Spitfire unit crest and a coaster to set it on. This kit is another winner. If you like Spitfires, get yourself one of these. We'll be right back after this pointless diversion. In a world where Spider-Man and the life of Alexander Hamilton can become musicals, we thought, why not? It's Fine Scale Modeler, the musical, a public domain, no way copyright infringing presentation. A young modeler. And I Alexander. I can't get no glue reaction. I can't get no part adhesion. Will it dry? Will it dry? Will it dry? Will it dry? Their eyes met over a modeling table. Styrene lovin' had me a blast. Styrene lovin' happened so fast. <sighs> the only thing standing in their way is the evil FSM Taskmaster, Aaron. Gee, I think it's gonna be a long, long build. <laughs> Will they survive the onslaught? Then snip another part from sprue. There ain't a plane or tank we can't review. Babe. I got glue, babe. I got glue, babe. I got glue, babe. Find out in Fine Scale Modeler the Musical if we ever get a stage.
that is, you know, it's still waiting for that, you know, last couple hundred thousand dollars to come in. It's, uh, you know. Finally, from Panda, a 135th scale T-14 Armada. This next generation Russian tank has been shown at some Mayday parades and recently entered production. The hull sections have beautifully molded detail, including road wheel attachment points, rivets, vents, and panel lines. The road wheels, drive sprockets, idlers, suspension arms, and other running gear parts look sharp. Fender skirts include ERA blocks and bar armor wraps the rear of the tank. The unmanned turret includes an intersection on the base with protected smoke grenade launchers. That gets wrapped in the outer armor. The 125 millimeter main gun is split in half. Separate hatches can be posed open, but there's no interior. Clear parts provide periscopes, gun sights, and vision blocks. Individual track links comprise four parts each. A jig aids assembly. Photo etch brass provides covers and frames for equipment, the turret stowage basket mesh, and engine grills. Decals mark a parade vehicle and include a flag for the pole mounted between the hatches. Another nice release from Panda. It's also released a T-15 infantry fighting vehicle based on the same Armada Universal combat platform. Look for reviews of the B-17 and T-14 in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the February issue on sale in early January. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I really am Elizabeth Nash. Really, really. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. The fuselage is broken into the main fuselage. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Own it, Aaron, own it. The, <laughs> the scratching voice. <laughs>